Peregrine is as old as the human race. The carrying of banners has been a custom among all peoples and all ages. These banners usually contain some concept of the life or government of those who fashion them. The evolution of the American flag marks the progression of the government of the American people. From the founding of Jamestown in Virginia in 1607 until 1775, the flag of England was the flag of the peoples of America. In 1775, the pine tree flag was adopted for all colonial vessels, and this was the banner carried by the Continental Forces in the Battle of Bunker Hill. Was the president of the chamber, and he was the CEO of um, Ideal Manufacturing. And he thought that there needed to be some kind of festival that would bring our county residents together. Does that sound kind of familiar to you? It seems like whenever the Green County people pull together, we can do amazing things. And he thought it would be appropriate for us to try to figure out something that we could do that would not only honor our Green County and bring people together, but also bring people from outside Green County to see what we had to offer and to promote our pride in being in Iowa. So he pulled a number of us together and we did all kinds of brainstorming. What kind of festival could it be? And we're close to Ames and some thought we could have an international festival because lots of international students over at Iowa State University and we could have that. Well, that was kind of a bummer because all the kids are usually gone in the summer and we wanted to have this in the summer. So we thought and we thought and we thought. And one time, we so we asked the people from the Iowa Development Commission to come up and help us brainstorm. And we went through all kinds of ideas. And finally, the person from the Development Commission said, well, you know what's unique about this place, don't you? Now, I was brand new in Jefferson. I'm not a native of Jefferson. And I looked at everybody else who were around the table. And, and they said, well, what's that? And they said, it's the Bell Tower. And the people who'd lived here in Jefferson went, oh. <laughs> and sometimes you have things in your midst that you don't even think that are unique. And we all know the history of how the tower was created and all of the issues that went along with that. But some of us who are not native said, well, we think that's a great idea. So the Bell Tower Festival was born. And we tried so hard to bring all facets of the county together. We had all kinds of entertainment from all over the county, parade from, uh, with people from all over the county. And we thought, OK, how long can this last? Oh, maybe a couple of years. And one time I went over to Ames when they started theirs. And I looked at everything they had done, and I was so envious. They had color brochures, and they had all kinds of placards, and they had all of these wonderful things to do. And we were still trying to raise money for every time possible to get this event going. And we were doing brochures that were green with black type, and we didn't have this, and we didn't have that. We even had, a, had to take out a loan to get the festival started. And would you believe, 35 years later, we are still here. Described, uh, sounds like someone I would like to be. <laughs> this also sounds like something I might have dictated to uh, an assistant like Sue, uh, <laughs> and, and just in case I was eligible for another, another job. <laughs> um, before going any further, I want to introduce several people in the audience who represent the lights of my life. Um, and the first is my partner in all things and the love of my life, Elizabeth Jean Thompson. From <laughs> to not be afraid to fail. There's nothing like jumping off a cliff to find out that if your new wings work. You can scream all the way down. Um, don't be afraid to change. But most importantly, never give up. Never give, give in and never, ever quit. Now, I had a number of other stories I was going to tell you, but my wife has warned me what will happen if I try to do that. And it didn't sound very, very pretty. Uh, 
I will tell you that there was a time when Mrs. Bush asked me to come to the White House to brief her on a medical genetic problem. And on the way in the back door of the White House, a very large device flew overhead, which I think was created by the CIA for surveillance in Afghanistan. And it also clearly had a Democrat detector on board. And, and as it flew over, that detector must have gone off and, and said, uh, Democrat at 6 o'clock, unload all ordinance. <laughs> which it did. Right on top of the head. And this was a really healthy creature. Uh, it had streaks down my white shirt. It didn't smell very good either. So one of my assistants, my staff, worked on me and, and some others, and they said they got most of it off. Well, the, the first thing I was to do was to put on, on my jacket because his cover-up is the DC thing. <laughs> and, and secondly, they worked on my hair and they said they got most of it out and what was left just looked like low lights. <laughs> he just went in and, and, and briefing the uh, first lady and uh, under those circumstances is a, uh, an odd bu business. Now I've told that story at various meetings over the years and uh, Usually speaking, if I kind of camouflage what's going on, it's toward the end when people start to realize what's going on and they start laughing or snickering. And uh, at one meeting where I was introduced by uh, Dick Durbin from Illinois um, to a group of parents and scientists and physicians and so forth, um, I told that story at the end as an example of the challenges we, we face. And um, at the end, I said, so I learned from this experience uh, what the poet Ogden Nash meant when he penned those immortal words, and I'm glad that cows don't fly. 